you know, obviously it's like one thing to uh, live in the experiment and the experience. It's another thing to watch it back, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, let's start with the fight that you guys had back in um, Charlotte, where Jimmy said that you were maybe being too clingy. You know, I, I love you to death and I really do care about you, but truthfully, you've been a little clingy. Clingy? Well, you're saying you want me to give you more love and affection, and I feel like you're giving me too much. Clingy? What was your reaction watching that argument back? So that's definitely hard to see. It's hard to watch yourself be vulnerable and very emotional on TV. Like, that's, that's something that I knew I was going into, and I really just, you know, was <laughs> bracing for impact with that. Watching that back, did you have any regrets about that argument? I really don't have any regrets about telling her how I feel. Yeah. If I'm being honest, it was kind of a, a, gl a glass half full, glass empty type of thing. Yeah. I felt in that moment, she was giving me a little bit too much. She was asking for more. And I was sitting there as a man saying, I can't give you any more. Mm -hmm. We were just not in, we were not on the same page of things. And honestly, I would have withdrew. Uh, not withdrew the comment, but I would have held back from saying that if she wasn't continuing to, to dig and question my love for her. Um, because I, I will 100% validate how she feels and her feelings, but when we're getting to a point where she's sort of attacking me for just, for not loving her, she's claiming I don't love her, that was when I got, I started to not play defense anymore. And I was like, hey, this is where I'm at. I feel you were giving me too much. Let's take a step back from this. It's hard to see it, but there's also so much that wasn't shown in that conversation that, um, you know, I, I look like a literal psychopath, <laughs> but <laughs> we're out here. <laughs> well, I saw you kind of address that recently in a TikTok. Y'all, I have a therapist, okay? <laughs> For the love of God, I feel emotions big and I get excited and I get mad and I get sad and I just I feel it big and I will never apologize I love that about myself and that's something that I'm getting a lot of hate for is when I get excited how cringy it is that's me baby that is me if you don't like it then fast forward okay I can only imagine that's really heightened on something like this where you're supposed to marry someone you met two months ago 100% and this was day two of living together so hearing that like you're being clingy i only have a certain amount of time to show you the kind of wife i'm going to be so doing things for you something that didn't air is um he said i asked him why i was being clingy or why he thought i was being clingy it was because i went grocery shopping and asked him what he wanted for lunch and dinner and that was just too much for him the whole situation is a lot so i feel like I probably was coming on so strong because I'm trying to show you the kind of woman I can be to you. Yeah. And he was kind of pushing back because it was a lot. It's emotionally draining. It's just very exhausting. And so, um, yeah, that was intense. If she gave me a chance to want to miss her, I would miss her. We, we were taken away from everybody. I mean, I, I went into this experiment single as a Pringle. I come out zero to 100. We're getting married. Yeah, I was so confident she was going to be that person, but like, um, she was giving me way too much and I, I would be robbing her if I didn't tell her how I was feeling through it. So at that point, were you surprised by her reaction to how things were going? Like at that point, did you feel like, oh, I am giving you everything I possibly can or any reassurance that you need that I'm in it? Like, did you feel that? I did, um, and, and reliving it was actually even harder than I anticipated. I have told you I love you more than any of the guys have told their fiancés. That's don't a shit about them. I'm saying I have told you an excessive amount, in my opinion. I have told you a lot. Okay. And I have meant it every time I told you. I, okay. I really do love you. I didn't notice how much I was truly reiterating how I felt about her and um, watching it, you know, definitely uh, brings up some old feelings and it it, it, it it changes my perspective and maybe how I would have went about things. She spent a ton of time telling me how she feels and, and I just spent 90% of our relationship, what, what it looks like. I'm just telling her I love her and how I feel and a lot of it's hard watches, if I'm being honest. I feel like shit. 
for you to say I'm clingy when I'm trying to do things for you to prove to you like I'm hey, telling you how I feel. I love you. I'm telling you how I feel. Okay, well then that says a lot. If that's I, how you feel. I do not ever want to be with someone who says I'm too clingy, especially someone who put a ring on my finger. Can I ask in general, do you feel like you got a fair edit? Um, I, I don't know yet. I don't think so. I think that it's, it, there's a lot of stuff missing. Yeah, okay. So I felt the way I felt for a reason and, and unfortunately that doesn't show, but um, yeah. Yeah. And even recently, Jimmy did actually kind of echo that in an Instagram post defending you, really. He said, yeah. you guys really seen snippets of yeah. our relationship. Because there's yeah. only so much you can show when there's other couples involved, too. What do you wish audiences got to see about your guys' relationship and your connection? Jimmy was telling me everything I needed to hear, everything I wanted to hear, but his actions were speaking differently. Mm. And the audience doesn't see that because we only film for, like, the afternoon. So we have all day where we're really trying to, like, maneuver our relationship so that's not shown so everything that i was feeling was so valid and i was expressing the way i felt for a reason i didn't feel those feelings for nothing i wasn't bringing up an argument just to bring it up those were just valid feelings that i felt i needed to express them i don't even need you to take care of me financially i just like emotionally like coming up to me and like grabbing my face and kissing me telling me i'm pretty or like telling me like good morning like i'm so excited to spend the day with you today like I haven't really gotten that from you. I felt I was 100% on her side and communicating to her, and I felt so secure about, about our relationship mm. that I didn't have to kiss her every minute of the day. Right. And I think some insecurities and came, came out of that. And so um, I, I do believe that there was a hundred different ways I could have reworded things. Clingy is a harsh word, 100%, but I, it was in the heat of the moment and I didn't have a better way of putting it. And I am glad I got it off my chest, you know? For sure, yeah. We have two weeks to figure out if we're getting married and you're worried about partying. I'm not into it. Okay, I've done nothing but prove to you where I'm at with you. You don't think that I love you? You have showed me. If you don't think I love life. you, I don't want to be here. You don't think I love you? I don't know. When did you feel like things were going maybe south with Chelsea? You know, when did you start to feel a little different or think, you know what, I don't think we're a match. I don't think I can get married to you. Well, Chelsea and I fall really hard. And I'm a guy that always looks at the positives in everything. I was in the Dominican raving about how secure our relationship was and how I have the best relationship here, hands down. Like I can look all the other guys in the eyes and be like, my relationship is better than yours. Like I, we were going through with this and I was just so confident about us. And I think she just didn't feel the same way. And so when it came down to pillow talk and when it came down to us being in intimate settings, we were the best in the world. And that's why I was so frustrated because it's like when, when the camera is turned on, we had all these insecurities and things she wanted to, to, to pick fights about. I don't want to go to the altar. I can't. So, like, what ultimately led to your decision to call off the wedding? Like, specifically that? What's funny is, during the pods, the day before proposal day, we both had two people to break up with the following day when we yeah. expressed the feelings. And I told her, we're not going to tell anybody else that we have sort of made our decision. That way we can make the next conversation easier for the both of us. I don't know if that was her idea, if it was my idea, but it was a mutual agreement. She goes out, ends up telling everybody, gets back to Jess. That makes my conversation so much harder the next day. So mm -hmm. that was the first time I she broke my trust. And that ultimately is what led us to not working out. Yeah. I was fighting for her, you know, tooth and nail, trying to, to make it work. The the connection we had was the real deal. And I I I really truly loved her and I wanted to get married to her and it's hurtful when you're telling someone over and over again that you love them and you're you're still not giving them enough mm -hmm. but ultimately it was the trust piece I told her something out of confidence that I did not want talked about and boy did she f me out now obviously another thing that's gained a lot of attention is Jess's comments that Jimmy would choke when he finally got to see her. When you see and realize what you missed out on, you are going to choke. You're gonna choke. 
you are going to need your EpiPen to open up your airways because you are going to be in disbelief of what you missed out on. What was your reaction when you saw that? And have you heard, have you been in communication with Jess at all? Yeah, so that was, you know, pop off sis. I think that she had every right to be in her field. She had every right to have her emotions and feel that certain way and have that great breakup conversation. So I fully support her in saying that. Um, I have been in contact with her. She's just really lovely and, and yeah, yeah. Have you looked him up on social media? Has he looked you up on social media? Yeah. Okay, whenever you guys got back the day after, he sends me a friend request and I see it come through immediately and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, hang on, what do I do, what do I do? Eight hours go by like, and I go back and check and he withdrew the, the friend <gasps> request and then put his profile on private. And I was like, I already saw what you looked like. We know you reached out to her on social media at some point. What was your reaction when you saw her? Did you choke when you saw Jess? We got out of the experiment. We're all so freaking happy to get our phones. I followed every single person on there. I knew I was gonna have an opportunity to see that woman. Yes, I was excited to see her, but she blew it out of proportion just a tad. As it, as it pertains to <laughs> what I actually saw her, I got a little bit of a heads up. I don't even have a clue what Jess looks like other than the picture that Jeremy showed me. Really? You didn't tell me that Jess was a Kardashian? I said Jeremy said she looks like a Kardashian mm. in the gym. Jeremy did see me in the, gym, in the gym and we talked through it, but... What I'm did he say? I'm not, I'm not falling for it. Like, she's maybe... She is a, a very, very gorgeous woman. No one need, even needs to tell tell her that. It goes without saying. But I wasn't gonna, I'll boost everybody's ego on the entire show. I refuse to do it with her out of respect for Chelsea. Mm. You know, uh, were you surprised by her comments? Because she did say that not only did you follow her, but then you rescinded the request and then went private. Was that because of her? Uh, like what was going through your mindset when you did that? Is that in fact true, actually? When she claimed that I followed her and went private, um, I was a little pissed off because everybody got their phones back before I, I did. So she, while I was public, she got to fully investigate. Clearly she was investigating. People aren't talking about that. She went to my profile first. She's the one that did all the research. And she's trying to spin it around like I was just, I was in her DMs and all this stuff. None of that happened. Well, yeah, because you had to request her to follow, right? Yeah, so I, I, I requested to follow her. I did do that. And she waited like two days or something. And then I, I, I withdrew it. I was like, okay, well, like if she's going to play petty about it, then yeah, and then I'll, I'll just not, I don't want to follow her. I'm not going to give her the peace of mind that I'm interested to see what she looks like at that point. It's just funny because she took it and ran with it. And then now I'm seeing all this play back and she's at the bar talking to Laura about how she would be so interested to see me. Do you think that he would want to see me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, if I were to see Jimmy again, it's going to be like dangling temptation, like right in front of his face. It's the truth and you know it is. So it's funny how it just goes, it goes both ways, but yeah. um, it was, uh, it, it wasn't anything juicy. It was, it was just me wanting to reach out to everybody I was on set with. I mean, you were concerned that Jimmy was maybe second guessing himself, right? Especially about you and Jess. And he did get in touch with Jess on social media when you guys returned from the pods. How big of a role do you think that played into your fight and also ultimately the breakup? I brought up the Jess thing, which I shouldn't have. That was not fair on him. It wasn't fair on me to bring that up. Hmm. I felt like he really, really changed his demeanor the second that he I hate to say it, but the second he really saw what he missed out on, and God bless, like, she's stunning. So he had these feelings that came up. And in my heart, I was getting this reaction from him, from his body language, from his words with me. He just wasn't really receptive of my love. And so, of course, I'm going to think that. This is such a weird, weird environment. So, of yeah. course, you know, and as he thought with Trevor. Right. <laughs> That's what I was going to say, because, you know, you also had two men to choose from. You yeah. also had a decision, you know? Yeah. Like I remember your friends and you and your friends were joking that he was a hot commodity, but Chelsea, I would say you were too. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you were, especially um, seeing the connection you had with Trevor. I mean, you know, Trevor told us that you were still good friends, but would you ever consider giving things with him another try? 
You know, I, I wouldn't, and I'll tell you why, because I would never want Trevor to feel like a sex, second option ever. Mm. I would never want him to think he was my backup decision. That's just not fair to him. He's a wonderful, wonderful human. So, yeah. um, no, yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you, was there any point that you second guessed your final choice? Of course. I think that really getting to know someone, that's the whole point of the exper experiment, is really learning about someone and there were definitely moments where I would think, you know, Trevor wouldn't, Trevor wouldn't have done that. So um, yeah, it's it's just a crazy situation and I just had to maneuver it the way I did.